has officially started as of today. He is chilling in jury selection as we speak on this live right now. You know? Crazy. It took way too long. Yeah. I'ma just let y'all know just like that, you know what I'm saying? To the 1,600 people that's in here right now, bro, trial is started today. There's no more free mail. Swear to God. YNW Melly is about to lose his life to his court case, as rappers are now reacting to the new evidence that is going against him. Here's what you need to know. On October 26th in 2018, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, two YNW associates being Sack Chaser and Juvie would sadly pass while leaving a recording studio alongside YNW Melly and YNW Bortland, as here's how YNW Bortland explained the passings. And I'm driving, ducking for my life. Trying to make sure so I don't get hit, and you telling me you work, you telling me about some shit. I don't man, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make sure so I don't get hit. I don't, I'm, man, I'm driving. I'm trying to make sure so I don't get hit. You know what I'm saying? I, what I'm gonna be worried about? You know what I'm saying? I I know it's not for you to worry about. Shit, crazy, bro. But if you tell me it happened there, there's got to be some evidence there. There's gonna be broken glass, just like there's broken glass over here from when you guys opened the the doors and stuff like that. Okay, there's gonna be broken glass over there when the windows got shot out. There's gonna be casings from the people at your car. Okay, there's gonna be stuff, evidence over there. Okay, right now, there's nothing. I kinda think I know what happened. I got information. Now, YNW Borland alleges that while driving home inside of the vehicle with Melly, an opposing vehicle filled with rival street members blocked their car off on the road. They then proceeded to roll their windows down and began using firearms against Melly's vehicle. With YNW Borland being the driver of the car, he then used his human instincts to swerve the car off of the road into an empty parking lot while trying to protect his side of the car. This then left Sack Chaser and Juvie side of the car an open target to these individuals and this would eventually lead to their passings and instead of calling an ambulance to the scene immediately for their two best friends who are now in critical condition Melly and Bortland would rather sit in an empty parking lot for roughly 40 minutes before getting the medical attention however the new evidence shared in the trial today shares a different story detective Christopher Williams announced in court when the four YNW affiliates left the recording studio YNW Borland was not cut off by an opposing vehicle. Rather, he then drove the car into an empty parking lot himself, away from any surrounding homes and witnesses. Now, the feds believe that YNW Borland created a distraction inside of the car. Meanwhile, YNW Melly did the act towards Juvie and Sack Chaser, as after it was complete, GPS evidence showed Melly and Borland sitting in the vehicle for around 40 minutes, until YNW Melly started stepped out of the car, walked around it in a circle twice before hopping back in. Mr. Williams also shared evidence backing those claims. He believes the rapper was likely the one who committed the act towards Juvie and Sack Chaser. Detective Williams is known to be one of the greatest detectives at recreating crime scenes to build an image on how crimes went down. Detective Williams reconstructed the crime scene. He used human-like figures in the exact same model Jeep that they were driving in. He then used firearms towards the figures, and everything lined up the exact same as the actual crime scene. It also revealed that Melly most likely did this act towards Juvie and Sack Chaser no further than 8 inches away from their faces, as all signs of who did the act towards them were sitting in YNW Melly's seat inside of the car. As here's a photo where everyone was sitting. Bortland being the driver had Melly sitting directly behind him, leaving Sack Chaser and Juvie both on the opposite side. Detective Williams used what's called the stick method where he would use plastic sticks to match the trajectory of a firearm that could have been used from any location. The trajectory from YNW Melly's seat shows a perfect match to where Sack Chaser and Juvie were affected once they were examined at the hospital. 
After sharing that evidence in court, it wasn't until Detective Williams shared this that surprised even the judge. Where the feds directed YNW Melly to turn himself into jail on February 13th, 2019, this was because the lead detective in the case said in a deposition that YNW Sack Chaser was set to receive $200,000 from YNW Melly's record label. However, just one month before talks of Sack Chaser getting signed, this would be YNW Melly's mom posting this video online show me text messages from sack chaser all her friends and all these people like he's about this life but i'm saying like who you ever who you ever out at what you ever did you couldn't even take charge if you don't sit your down and don't ever come for me because my credentials is real it ain't even a joke, so don't ever try to come for me, cause I don't even play them type of games. Like, what 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 you got that I ain't got? Oh, you your look? I got big. Things. On the end of the day, Melly is my child. Now this video created a real mystery for law enforcement. Melly has stated many times his mother is the most important thing in his life. So if someone goes after her, there could be a motive to retaliate. Now to find answers, the police attempted to subpoena 300 Entertainment during their investigation in order to investigate the YNW Sack Chaser record deal. The detective explained that the company refused to honor their subpoena. This would make the feds then have to ask YNW Sack Chaser's mother, Jana Thompson, to expand on the 200k payment in a March 2022 deposition. Though she specified she didn't know exactly who the money Money was from or what it was for, she did say that her son reached out to her a few days before he passed, where she said and I quote, my son hysterically called me, she said. He was very concerned about my whereabouts. He was concerned about his sister's whereabouts and he was just concerned, like something is gonna happen to us. And he told me that he would not get his money. As she continued saying, he said, I'm probably not gonna get my 200,000. I'm probably not even gonna get my money. Now around the time of Sack Chaser's passing, his music career just began taking flight. He dropped two hit songs titled Tropical and back end, and it got the attention of YNW Melly and his music label. According to records, they claim that YNW Melly, one, could have done this to retaliate for Sack Chaser going after his mom, but two, Melly could have done the act towards Sack Chaser to avoid paying him 200 grand to join the record label. If this turns out to be true, YNW Melly would be eligible for the penalty as he used money as a motive, including possibly Melly trying to retaliate for his mother as the setting of Sack Chaser and Juvie's passing almost just seemed too perfect for a retaliation attempt. Rappers would begin reacting to YNW Melly for a very short period of time, as Kodak Black would share this on Instagram. Yo, man, free that boy Melvin, man, free Melly. Yo, man, stop. We're not, we're not playing like that. Oh, he's gonna fall and with YNW Melly at this moment in time now in jail for only one month, YNWB Slime would say this in an interview. So what's some of the musical advice YNW Melly gave you? Musical advice. Find fire melodies and make money. No cap. At least you're just straight forward. How was it to see your brother rise to the forefront? It's kind of like normal to me because I already knew what was going to happen. It's just a matter of time when. What can the people expect to see Melly on? What could it be? I would say a cheat code for the rap game. Also one month into YNW Melly's jail time, Lil Durk and King Vaughn would have a phone call with Melly. Strangely enough, this would be one of Melly's last ever phone calls from jail as he would be permanently banned from using it. Bust you tippy. Bust out of the man. It's me. I said, 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 I said
With the Dirk phone call now going viral at this time, it would get the attention of Meek Mill, who would share on Twitter, free Lil Melly, he innocent. Let's watch the facts of the case so he doesn't get railroaded. It's in Florida, it might be on TV. This would even later cause Boosie to tweet, I'm in prayers for YNW Melly tonight. I was in the airport. He paid for my food and magazines and really showed me love and respect. He said, nah, OG, you ain't paying for a thing. I'm about to call the prayer warriors for you. And this would even lead into an alleged Snoop Dogg tweet that also went viral on Reddit, which stated, that Melly boy's cold. Youngin's doing questionable stuff in the industry now. Is he guilty though? Again, if the tweet's real, it has now since been removed. And we would even see the likes of Drake praising YNW Melly for his music style. You know, a kid like YNW Melly who like, yeah just has the craziest melodies, pain in his voice, you know, but not afraid to just be like, yeah, sure, like, I'm, I might be this way on road, but in my music, this is what I, this is what I enjoy doing. And However, rappers reacting and even talking about YNW Melly would slowly fade away. As Melly's jail time would continue getting longer and longer, new evidence revealed that Melly could have truly done this. And while things were silent, out of the blue, we would see reports of YNW Melly is being accused of teaming up with one of his lawyers to plot a prison escape. As the Broward County Jail where YNW Melly is currently locked up did an interview with Complex where they mentioned in the courtroom on April 11th, 2022, Broward Sheriff's Office received a confidential tip regarding inmates Nicholas Lewis and Jamal Demons, both housed in the same unit at the main jail, planning an escape from jail by having Demons' attorney bring in two handcuff keys in order to aid the escape. Additional information provided by the source was that Lewis had an illegal item inside a jail, as well as narcotics that were not prescribed to him. The statement continues saying, jail authorities searched Lewis's jail cell after the tip, which came from another inmate. They found multiple illegal items and narcotics for which he did not have a prescription. YNW Melly's cell was also searched, but nothing was found except food from the commissary and an excessive amount of jail issued clothing. So this all started while YNW Melly was having lunch with this inmate named Lewis. Another inmate was walking by and he eavesdropped on their conversation where allegedly Melly said he was going to ask his lawyers for a handcuff key. We would even see YNW Melly's mother react to this statement. Okay, so I'm at work and I just seen this crazy story. First of all, this is just another tactic for them to try to literally just tarnish my son's character and everything. They do not want him having attorney visits in person, which will cause for ineffective counsel. So we went to court for that and they took his phone calls and they have him locked down. They had no evidence whatsoever that his attorneys did anything wrong to prove these accusations, but they knew it would get picked up by the media. So when we get ready to pick a jury, hopefully within the next two weeks, it's gonna be, oh, this kid tried to escape. Oh, this kid tried to do all these things. This is all fake because they do not have a case. In the video, Melly's mom mentions how the feds have no evidence against him, so the prosecutors are trying to make anything happen to make him look bad. Melly's manager, 100K Track, would even defend Melly's mom in this situation. He, we, he built a real great solid team away from just being innocent because he wouldn't do such a crime. He prepared himself and got a proper, you know, defense. Their job is to handle their self in trial, not on social media. You guys are taking it that way. If they say they got DNA in a car, I'm just going to tell you Melly DNA was found in the car. You're going to think, yeah, his DNA was found in the car the day of the Oh, he jumped in a car and his DNA was in the car. He did it. Okay, but you're not going to put the fact that this was his car for six, seven months on, on, on those documents and dockets and just automatically be like, yo, he's, he's fried. You don't even know what the defense is. You don't even know what the rebuttal is. You don't even know why that situation occurred. You hear ballistics flying. You don't know what the defense is. You hear this, you hear that, you get what I'm saying? I'm gonna be honest.